We're going to go in three, two, one. Lions Lounge Lockdown, episode 11. The skipper, Stuart Nevercott. Nevers, thanks for your time, mate. No problem, mate. Best, save the best till last, eh, yeah? <laughs> we, have heard, we have heard some stories. We have got a lot to cover, but uh, yeah. um, we'll start at the very beginning of your meal career. Yeah. Joined in 1998, originally on loan. Yeah. Um, and then after a brief loan spell, joined the club permanently from Tottenham Hotspurs. Uh, how did that come about, coming to Millwall? Um, it, it was a... It was a Sort of a fast track, really. Um, I was falling down the pecking order at Spurs. New manager had come in, uh, didn't fancy me, didn't fancy me, or, or a lot, a lot of the lads that were left there. And um, Patsy Holland was was working at um, Spurs at the time, and he, or he might have been, at, I don't know if he, he might have been at, with Billy at Mill, but uh, there was a connection there with me and Patsy and. Uh, he, he was obviously mates with Billy Bonds and uh, he um, he obviously put a good word in for me and things like that. And uh, yeah, turned into a, from a, a, a loan move in, into a permanent. But uh, it was an um, interesting time moving there because it, it, it was quite an ageing squad. You had the likes of Andy Gray, Paul Allen, uh, Kenny Brown. Uh, yes, yeah, so, so them boys were coming to the end of their career and I was coming in there to sort of, you know, give them a bit of legs. How old was you when you joined me all? Uh, about 26. Oh, right, okay. It was under that, um, the Bosman ruling and things like that, that all come into, into place as well. So, uh, yeah, it, it was, um, it was a difficult decision because obviously it was, it was two leagues, you know what I mean? I was, I was going somewhere, it was just two leagues and you think to yourself, you know, am I better than that or anything like that? But, you know, I, I, I felt the club, um, you know, I, I, I enjoyed my time, you know, you know, starting off there. Obviously, I had a, I had a bad injury, um, dislocated my shoulder at Fulham. And uh, that was about um, three, three games towards the end of the season. And um, I thought, oh, shit, I've got no club, you know what I mean? Spurs have released me and um, I've just done this and it's like, what do we do? So, you know, luckily Frio did offer me a deal, um, offered me a year's deal, well, a two-year deal. And uh, I think they saw enough of me to, to think, you know, I was going to be a decent signing for them and things like that. So, yeah, I made my debut up at York. Um, I, think, I think we won we won 3 nil. But the, 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 the main thing that comes out of that was, it was, the, you know, when you get the punters behind the goal and things like that. Yeah. But my first slagging off was it it took about 20 minutes. Fucking hell never caught you turn like the QE2. <laughs> and it was like <laughs> oh, Mill fans. Oh, oh yeah. So you know they they, they soon um, you know give us a bit of stick as early as that. But uh no, there's some great uh, you know and, and and the and the story with the, the, the dis dislocated um shoulder. Um I was pleased I'd done it at Fulham because uh Al Fayed, who was the chairman at the time, yeah, he, he rushed me. He got someone to rush me straight to the Westminster Hospital. You can't get a better hospital than that, and to have the operation. So it, I was in there, operation done, and then back out. You know, recuperating back out and back to uh, you know my my pre season. My I was I was in all the way through the close season and, and, and getting myself ready. For the new season, so um, didn't get much of a break really, but because uh, I was I was in I was in the training ground, but uh, that um, that uh, uh, Fulham game, obviously we we meet meet the training ground, and um, so I left. You, you leave your car outside the training ground, Calmont Road. So you leave your car outside. So my car's now sitting there for three or four days. I get a phone call at three o'clock in the morning from the old bill. I had, I had an old um, convertible Golf. You know, it was lovely electric roof and, and things like that. Yeah. And uh, yeah, they phoned up at three o'clock in the morning. I, 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 I thought, shit, so it's from my family or whatever. Uh, you missed the Nevercock, yeah. Well, your car's just been sliced up. <laughs> Oh uh, yeah, the roof had been down, everything and all that. So obviously, I can't go up there to um, to drive it. So I've I've got the AA to go and pick it up for us and bring it back. And it was like, oh no, I'm going to stay in this car. You know what I mean? So a permanent convertible. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was. And there's another story with that because we're training. This is um, 
you know, a couple of months later, training at the training ground, and all of a sudden, like, someone's seen a young lad running out of the car park. All these cars they could pick on, would they pick on, pick on my one again? <laughs> so they're going for my car again. So then that was it. Well, well, it was the colour, was it? It was like, dodgy like, yeah, it was just it was just weird, like right? you know, he, uh, someone saw someone roaming around the cars, and I thought, oh, I can't be my one this time. <laughs> Someone's gone into my car again. So uh, yeah, so that was, uh, and then I'm thinking, to myself, I've done the right thing, side in here. Uh, <laughs> nah, it was good. It was it was, it was quality, quality. Well, you said um, you just said there you answered one of my questions. I got written down in my notes. You know, yeah. the decision to drop two leagues. Yeah, must have been a tough one. Obviously, coming from the Premier League. It's not always a regular at Spurs. We played a few games here, and, and yeah, yeah. you definitely may, may have thought to yourself, "I could probably go one league higher than the yeah. League One." Who yeah. who sold the club to you? Was it Theo? Was it Billy Bonds? Yeah, I, th I think at the end of the day, it was it was um, probably Theo was was the main one out of that. I, I think you know, obviously, with, with, with the injury and things like that, and obviously, no one's no one else is going to touch you because you you. You're like you're six weeks, seven weeks behind or whatever, and and, and the season would close. But Theo, you know, come in, you know, two year deal, and it was like brilliant. I'll, I'll you know, I want to stay. You know, I, I I had to secure. I needed security, and um, you know, I think one of my first interviews I did give it for, for the club is I'd love to see this ground absolutely packed out, and because uh, you know they were struggling a little bit in the. In the never regions of the table, the club needed a boost. Um, they were only getting five thousand crowds and things like that. And uh, when you're used to playing in front of decent crowds and things like that, that was another obviously a thing that went in my mind. But you know, as I said in my first interview, I'm, I'm going to see this place jump in in a full house, and uh, and that's what that that is what happened really. You know, and, and, yeah. and, how, how was Billy Bonds for you as a manager? Yeah, he was okay. You know, you know, I've had you know decent centre half. You know, for West Ham, manager wise as well. But he was never gonna, you know, he was never gonna um, succeed there. You know, he was, you know, you don't, do you? You know, it's George Graham was the same when he when he moved across to Spurs. He's never, he was never gonna succeed there. You know, what I mean, they couldn't even sing his name. You know, what I mean, yeah. the man in the raincoat. <laughs> Blew my army, you know what I mean? It's, it's just like, but well, Billy was the same, and I think he he he, he had a lot of ex West Ham players in that side as well. And I, I just I don't think it was it was the way to go for, for, for Billy. And I think the decision for Billy to go was was obviously the right one. And um, you know, and the, obviously the, the other the, the the two the two boys come in after that. Yes, yeah, so what I was going to get onto. Rhino and Mako come in. Yeah. Um, you quick, very quickly uh, established yourself as a captain under them, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, I was, I was, I was always filtering around in and out with captains and things like that. Um, yeah, that they made me captain, which was, was a great honour. Um, you know, you're looking at the, the players that we had. You know, it was a very young squad coming through, and it was probably myself who was the only really senior player in the side. Um, we got more senior players as, as, as the season went on, but um, it, it was, it was, you know. I was pleased to be made captain of, 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 of a great young squad and, you know, got on with Ryan Imaka really well. And, um, you know, obviously I was out the side for a bit, in the side for a bit and uh, with them, but, you know, that was that was the case it was. So, um, no, I was fine with them, that, that, you know, and um, as I said, we had a great young squad that was coming through at the time. There's, there's a good good picture, actually, of you leading the team out, Wembley. You had, a, you had like a... I was, was going to say a point style or a Terry Butcher style. For you. Yeah, Some yeah. Was, may not know what I'm talking about here, but you had obviously a, a head injury. How did that come about? Yeah, we, um, our training was fierce. It, it was fierce, you know what I mean? It was um, Monday mornings and any day. We, we trained the way we play. You know, I, I look at us and looking back on them days and we played like animals, you know what I mean? We were, we were lions roaring and, um, you know, but... but Monday mornings was always competitive. It was like us old boys were a little bit stiff from Saturday and it was like, oh, fucking hell. Young. So, so it, we used to get the young v old game, the young, the young players v the older players. Yeah. So the younger players consisted of Sads. Uh, there was a lad called Ben May. I don't know if you remember Ben May played a lot of games. Big lads, you know. 
And the last thing you need on a Monday morning is them stamping all over your toes. You know what I mean? It's just not not on. But no. it, it happened. So it got us going. It got us rather that most of the time we beat the we beat the younger ones. You know what I mean? It was it was it was a norm. But for this for this game again, we'd have a great session. You know, no one's larking about. Everyone wanted to prove they were going to start the game and um, practicing set pieces. I was on, well, we were, we were defending set pieces at the time. I've gone up for a header, Mark Bertram, bang, straight in the eye. Claret everywhere, being a ginger and all that. <laughs> Claret coming out everywhere. And I'm thinking to myself, you wake up. You're just not, you're just not my dream. I played at Wembley, leading the side out, and I've got a cut over my eye like that. Seven stitches or something like that. So running to Jerry, 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 sort this out. I'll be all right for tomorrow, won't I? Yeah. That's the physio, Jerry. Was it the right. day before? Day before the final? Yeah, yeah. Day before. Okay. So I'm like getting stitched up, getting stitched up. I'm saying, Jerry, I'll be all right when I, you know, yeah, we'll bandage it up. So I'm like, all right, we'll bandage it up. So in that game, about 10 minutes gone, the bloody thing slipping here and slipping there. I'm sweating and everything's slipping down on my eyes. I'm like that. Shh, take it off. Like these days, you wouldn't be able to do it. You know what I mean? The yeah. ref would have gone, no, 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 no. You know what I mean? Blood and, and things like that. So I just continued. I just went on and um, played. And uh, yeah, whatever anyone says, it was it was a it was a shit game, but fantastic, fantastic day for everyone involved. Yeah, hundred percent, mate, hundred um, percent. We fell short in the playoffs, obviously that season. Yeah. And then the season after, not long into it, Rhino and Macca were sacked, and Mark yeah. McGee comes in. Yeah. Uh, what's your? We speak to a lot of the players, and they got some quite um, distinct and almost upsetting memories of, of Ryan and Macca leaving. Where did yeah. you stand on that? Yeah, I was. Well, I was. I was out of the team at the time, and um, about three or four games leading up to the Brent, Brentford game, they brought me back for the Brentford game. I, um, I think I got the equaliser or chopper took it off me or something like that, but. Uh, yeah, it, it was sad the, the, the way it ended from really because obviously two uh, legends of, of, of the club and uh, great blokes, you know what I mean? And uh, I'd heard the rumours that they, that they were spat out and, and things like that going down the tunnel and, and stuff like that. But uh, Roy Putt, the, um, the, kit, the kit man at the time, uh, he ran me on the Sunday and said, oh, the two boys have, uh, have gone and... Um, I, th- I think it was it was a situation where we got to the playoffs the, s- the season before, and this year was going to be the year where we were going to go the next step. And we were going to take it on to the next step. Yeah. And we didn't really start the season in in full full mode. And uh, I think it was Theo's decision, thinking you know his budget's decent this year. We should be doing better than what what we started. So. Theo, hold your hold your hands up. You, you made an absolute master stroke. You know what I mean. So yeah. it was a fantastic, fantastic stroke of genius. And uh, obviously, looking at Mark's story, the way that he, it all panned out for him coming into the into the club is it, it, quite strange as well. For someone that wasn't really interested in getting back in the game, it was all for his agent. But that's how things work in football. You know, you, 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 sometimes a club suits the fit of you, and uh, he definitely he, he suited the fit of the club. During your time, obviously at the club in the early days, you would have played with some good centre halves. Yeah, Joe Dolan. Yeah, Fitzgerald. Yeah, Tuttle. Yeah, yeah and, then, and then a little bit later on, Dyche. But um, yeah, yeah. What was your first? Who was your first play with in, in central defence? Would it have been Joe? Probably Joe. Yeah, probably yeah. was Joe. Yeah, and Fitzy as well. Um, you know, it, it was it was it was a. It was probably the, the only position where there was so much competition for for two places. You know, mm-hmm. you know, the, we had, we had one left back, might have had one right back. You know, Gerard Lavin was the was the right back. Uh, Jamie Stewart, the left back. Obviously, Robbie come in after. Then there was a bit of competition with them, with them two. Matty Lawrence come in, and there was obviously competition at right back. But it was. It seems you know we always had always had good centre halves, and obviously. The later it went on, Robbo was coming through the ranks, Mark Phillips was coming through the ranks. You know, there was a good line of centre arse that was coming coming through the system. So you had to be on your toes. You had to be on your toes because if you didn't perform well, they were going to come in and take your place. And that's you know 
Yeah, that's what happened at the end, really, for me. But uh, but that is that is exactly what happens. And and you know, good. You know, Fitzy had come from Wimbledon, great pedigree. Joe was was someone you know, great stature, height wise. You know, you knew that that was going to be a, a good centre half. Um, and he was he was good playing alongside. And uh, you know, the semi final of the um, auto windscreen springs to mind we was at home and I think we were struggling for centre arms. I played with Rhino. So me and Rhino turned out. Rhino hasn't played for for months or weeks and his fitness was was all over the place. <laughs> and I you know, there was one one uh, it, only Rhino could do this. It, it was coming to the end of the game and someone's gone past him and he's put his head right in front of the ball. <laughs> yeah, he was done. And all he had, he tried to tackle with his head. So he's like, <laughs> unbelievable. So, he, you know, that that's, but he couldn't play the, the next, he, you know, we were back up the Warsaw on the on the Tuesday or Wednesday and uh, he, his legs were done, you know what I mean? So Joe, Joe come in for that one and, um, you know, the, I'll go back to that night. Well, you know, that was, a, that was just an unbelievable, that, that was when you knew this fan base is something else. You know, you go up to Warsaw and we took the whole place over my sister and, and uh, husband were there that night and um, on the pitch after everyone's on the pitch. So I see my sister and her husband on the pitch. They're like <laughs> rocking, rocking and rolling on, on there. So it was, it was uh, that, that for me, that night turned everything for me to think this has got some fan base of a club. And if we are successful, they're going to come with us as well. They didn't know our names. People, the, the people coming on the pitch, Probably ain't been to Millwall for like four or five years, just just had enough of it. And they were like, well done, I'll wash your name again. <laughs> it was like, it was brilliant. It was absolute brilliant night. And, uh, you, know, it, it, you know, as I said, everything after that was with the 50,000 Wembley crowd and uh, yeah. absolutely un- unbelievable. Unbelievable. It was, a, it was a, like you say, players come in that may not have come in, you come in and then... McGee, you also had the, the good core youngsters coming through. Yeah. Did you have half an eye on them thinking, fuck me, Nick, we've got a good bunch here. We've got to have a, a bit of a special sign in a couple of years. Yeah, I, 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 well, obviously, the, the ones that come through the ranks were, you know, you, you're never going to get that again. That's never going to happen again. You know, if it does, then excellent. If I, but I can't see it happen again. To get a, to get six of them through the ranks and into the, into the first team was, was some going in yeah. Then you bag a second midfielder from Arsenal, uh, Dave Livermore. You know, you, you know, you're getting good players. We were getting decent players. Moody's come in from Fulham. He's had a promotion round, um, through Fulham and things. So he knew the league. And uh, Matty Lawrence was, was was coming in as well. You know, another one from Fulham. You know, great signings. Robbie from Bristol Rovers. You know what pick he was. Yeah, you know, so we, we, the, the scouting was, was very, very good, and, and I think the scouting was that good. It made Mark's job more easier, you know, to to mm-hmm. get that team together, mix a little bit of youth with a little bit of experience, and you you won't go far wrong. To be honest, I'll, I'll, I'll base my, my teams on that now myself. You know, I always go a little bit of little bit of experience. The rest of them let the, let the legs run around them for the experienced ones, and that's what we done. That's what we done. Yeah, but it's like thinking about it, I was going to say, well, you was one of the more experienced ones, but yeah. he wasn't really an old head at 26, 27, no, 28. No, no, that must no, have shown was, how young the rest of them were. Yeah, I was coming into my prime, you know. I was, yeah. you know, 28, 29. I, I think the, the season we got promoted uh, into the, now the championship, I played 58 games on the bounce, you know, 28, 29. So that's... That was my prime, you know what I mean? If, if you look at the players' careers that have gone on, where Timmy went on to Everton and things like that, his probably best years was when he was 28, 29 as well. You know, yeah. he was hitting form. You know, Reedy, Reedy be another one. You know, Ives was, was up there as well. So, you know, them sort of players were hitting top form at that age. And that, that's what it was. It, it was that age, that age thing for me. I, I was my fittest at probably 28, 29. And then you eat your thirties and you, you gradually move down. <laughs> your legs are fast. <laughs> yeah. It was a mixture of um of youth, obviously, and we said a little bit more experience. Yeah, yeah. More youth really than experience, but you seem to bond well as a group as well. Yeah. It was that like being one of the with the older ones. Did, did they go well, on your tits at times thinking you should dig in on my nurse today? Yeah. Or I can imagine you and Dyche giving a pep 
Yeah, just... yeah. But we used to go away, obviously. You've heard the stories of, of, of when we used to go away. Now I'm the only one that had a family with with, with a child with, with, with you know, a, a, a baby boy of three. So the first thing I used to do, I used to go on these trips, and the first thing I used to do, this is pre computers, laptops, and things. I'm going around the nearest um, holiday uh, holiday agents and booking my flight home. So I'm, I'm not sitting out in IB for all this, but I've had 52 weeks of these. I don't want to sit in IB for another, another seven days of them because you're getting grouchy. You're getting gr- I knew exactly yeah. what was going to happen. They're going to start banging on my door. We're coming in from a club at four o'clock. They're going to start banging on my door at 10 o'clock in the morning to start going out again. And I'm like, no, I ain't having that. So I, book, I always used to go around the corner, find a, a travel agent and book my flights home. Just book yeah. the flight home and, this, and, and then that's it. Three days, four days, I'm away sort of thing. So uh, that was the thing that I'd sort of um, tried to get myself out of. But a lot of them, a lot of them stayed out there for the week. We always, we used to always book up a week, and because that was the cheapest way of doing it. If we booked up for four days, five days, you, you, it was, it was getting a little bit more expensive. So they used to always go right. Come, I'm going to go for a week here. Some of them would stay on, but some, of, most of them would actually go home after about four or five days. Yeah. Yeah, but just obviously during just everyday training and match days on Saturdays, were they, you know, being around that group? Yeah. With her, with her, We've heard a lot of stories, and I'm, I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Your um, your pre-match ritual, should, should we yeah. call it? I don't know. Yeah. Uh, what exactly was it? Was it set in stone, or could it differ, or was it the same thing every week? No, I was I was in a, a, a bit of a. Um, I used to be a little bit superstitious and things like that. So all everything, if we won the week before, I'd stick to the same thing every sort of time. Just just get everything matted out, sorted out. And that's me. Claridge was the same. Claridge was worse than me. Absolutely worse than me. He had to tie up his boots in some way, pads some way, and, and, and things like that. So we had a few fruit loops in the dressing room. There's no question about it. But, you know, it, it was it was a certain time I used to come in after the warm-up. Uh, used to, used to uh, get in there. I knew Mark or whatever manager was going to start his talk at the end, or he might have been still been talking. And all we can hear in the background is me going, <laughs> and I'm just bringing up my breakfast, you know what I mean? So it, 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 is, it is the most stupidest thing you could do because you, you, your energy is all the food that you've, you've gone, yeah. you know, this, you, 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 you know, this is when the dietitians come in and things like that. They're like, what are you doing? You know, you just emptied your whole system out. But I felt all right. I felt comfortable. I felt, you know, it, it, it was it was me. It was a bit of a psych, psycho play as well. You know what I mean? Like to wind yourself up to get ready yeah, for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah it did. You know, I used to bang the chest, you know what I mean? And I used to get other players going and, and things like that. But it was, you know, I think it, it scared a few of the young boys when they first heard it. You know what I mean? They're going, fucking hell. This so is what we got. Was it like a... Did you do it once and it, you, had a, you had a good game so you could continue yeah, to do yeah, it? We did, mate. Probably did. You know, I, I do remember, I, you know, I, I was playing in the FA Cup semi-final um, with Spurs and ever, and I was fucking awful that game. And uh, But I was I was nervous with it. You know, that was that was big nerves and, and sickness, you know what I mean? And I, I we were lining up in the tunnel and I had to run off. I had to run off and go in, go in the dressing room and, and, and spew up. And... I looked after that game for thought, I don't think this is right. I don't think shouldn't be doing this. But I just continued it. I continued it. Any ex player that comes up and every, anyone that mentions them was going, yeah, fucking spews up everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> well, but it, it definitely left, it left the last impression. Like Christoph Kino was like, that Nevers man is fucking crazy. He said, <laughs> he said, I played, he said, I played all over Europe. I've never seen anything like this before. But yeah, obviously yeah. 20 years well, I've, late, I've, I've, actually, I've cool. actually seen um, the British Lions you remember you know, the British Lions when they go on tour to yeah. South Africa? Them rugby boys are big on it, massive on it. <laughs> <laughs> Doing the, they call it the Nevers as well. They all do yeah, the yeah, yeah. So what was, it, what was the animal noises? Or was that just you just screaming like a lunatic? Yeah. Is it not actually, not, weren't actually animal noises? Yeah, no, just like, psych, I just psych myself up big time, you know what I mean? Because you ain't going to... The, the, the people, the public, you're going out to play, especially at home and things like that. You just want to be psyched up, and you, you know you want to do a job on someone. That's, and that's what that's what it was really. It's just like it, it was mad at the time, but you know, you don't, you sure you don't want to show us? 
Yeah, I'm riding over it. <laughs> oh, my. You know, you know, I'll get out, you know, I would, I'll get out of the place, come on, you know, this, you know, this is it. You know, this is massive or whatever, you know what I mean? This is big and, you know, it's just, it, it was, a, you know, it's what it was. You, you know, know what, it's probably not enough of that today. It's probably not nah, enough. Probably isn't, mate. probably isn't, it's mate. Uh, but, uh, no, they're a bit timid these days, aren't they? So. <laughs> <laughs> so eventually we got the job done. We got promoted under Mark McGee. Yeah, yeah. Um, as we said, he inherited a good squad. What was he yeah. like for you as a manager, though? He, he's yeah, obviously... I enjoyed him. He's, he's been the best. He's been the best. Yeah? Uh, yeah, no question about it. He's been the best. Um, um, Terry Venables comes close, you know what I mean? Um, but his man management skills was was, the, was was it was everything really. And um, you know, you know it, it, the way he, he conducted himself, um, he wasn't a ranter and raver, you know what I mean? He he, he would never do that. Um, he knew we was in a such a we had such a young squad. But you couldn't do that. You couldn't do that to them, to them lads. And um, I, you know, I tell you stuff. You know, later on when we talk about uh, Mark's exit and, and, and stuff like that. But yeah, um, yeah it, it, it's it, 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 he was he was a top manager, and he had the two guys, Gritty and Ray Harford, with him as well. It, it was just a, a perfect mix. Training, as I said, was was you know it was hard. It was it was you know we all went at each other, you know, hammer and tong, you know, you, you train the way you play. It's always, you know, great motto, you, know, you train the way you play. And every single one of us will come off that pitch, might be pissed. We might be pissed on, on, the, on the Monday. But, you know what I mean? We actually went at each other, hammer and tong, and that got the best out of that group of players. Every single training session, you were hammer and tong every, every session. The season we got promoted, you yeah. obviously you lifted the trophy. We won it on the last day. Yeah. Who did you play centre half with most of that season? I'm trying to think. Yeah, Daichi came in towards the end, didn't he? Or, or, yeah, Daichi was in there. Daichi had a bit of a uh, sticky injury at the, at the, at the start, um, but we got we got the partnership going towards the end of the season. I think we uh, we went away somewhere. I think they, they took us away to Spain, and um, we come back, and I think we bounced out five. Clean sheets, you know. I think we lost. We lost the goal at Cambridge, and um, and that was the. Um, I think we hadn't conceded a goal for a long time. Yeah. And, um, but that was hard work. That was Ray Harford. You know, Ray Harford was more more of the uh, defensive side of, of of the team. We're gritty, and um, yeah. So he, um, you know, we, we we were solid. Anyone that come into that side. We, we, we never let you down, and they knew their jobs. They knew they knew everything that needed to be done, and uh, it, it, it was it was a, it was a top 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 squad, you know, that that season, and uh, you know we went on to the next season. Yeah. Who did you? Um, I don't know. In my head, I don't know why. But it's because maybe because you played next to each other, and you're sort of a little bit older than the rest of them. Yeah. Was he like? Was he you good mates with Daishi off the pitch? Yeah, or? he was good. You know, he, he was he was similar to me. He had a young family, uh, married. Um, I was, a lot of people say, you know, you're telepathic with someone, and I, I felt I was really we we had a good thing going. If he blundered, I'll cover him. If I blundered, he'd cover me, and that, that's the sort of relation I felt we had. You, you know, it, it, it was a good relationship. And when, when the run of games, you come around playing with someone, you know, you got you got your right back sorted, your left back sorted. You know, we we were you know we 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 wasn't gifted with pace. So the old Sam, we, we, they slaughtered me on the WhatsApp group every fucking tuck in, tuck in. I used to get my centre back to Matty. I used to rein Matty in all the time. You ain't going forward, stay there, tuck in. You know, and Robbie was the same over there. I was tuck in, Robbie, tuck in, stay in, no gaps. Because we didn't want to run down in channels. So if balls going down the channel. I don't want to fucking keep running down there and kicking the ball out of play. So Daichi was the same. So we used to get our fullbacks to stay in that hole. You had the ball, I had the ball, and it, and it, and it, it, it was it was working well. Obviously, with the big tone behind us as well. You know, you had, you had a good five there. You had a really good five, and obviously with the backup of Joe, you know, you, you knew he was never going to be let down when he stepped in. But obviously, his injuries were were coming into play then. So that was a big miss. Big miss. Well, we sp- I was going to lead me on to that nicely. I, Joe spoke very highly of you. And he said, if you had yeah. to play alongside someone, yeah. who would it be? And he said, well, Daishi won't be happy, but it'll be Nevers. He said, yeah. 
because you you told him exactly what you wanted. You said, "Look, yeah. you fucking hold. I'm going to go and win the battles." Yeah. Well, I, I I think he become he become the man at that Warsaw away game. You know, he headed. I tell you that last five minutes, ten minutes. He must have headed everything. He headed everything that was up there. He headed it and won it. And we were, we were virtually defended on Tony. You know, we were fucking knackered. We were absolutely hanging. We were on our death's door and they were just bombing balls, bombing. And he was up there, a young boy, smashing everything. You know, he, when he headed the ball, he took the whole lot out with it. You know what I mean? And that, he, 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 he did grow up that night. He was, he'd become an absolute man. That night, he he was he was phenomenal. That especially that last last ten minutes, you know, and they were big lads. And they were pumping the ball in there. He, he was he was top draw, top draw. Yeah, so a lot of people speak highly of him. And sad, saying how good they was when you was sort of a more senior pro, looking at those youngsters of Reedy, Kyle, Joe, Sad. Was there one in particular for you that stood out? Um, you for the Reedy for the early one, Reedy yeah. for the early one. Um, but you could see Timmy was going to be the one that was going to. You know, go first. I thought it, it had gone first. Lucas Neal. Lucas Neal was the first that went. You know, that surprised us, but he was struggling to get in the side with Matty, Matty there. Uh, Ives was obviously playing in front of Matty. Yeah. He went first. I think the connection with Ray Harford at Blackburn, that, that deal sort of got sorted out pretty quickly. Um, yeah, so, and then obviously, you, you know, your Reedies, uh, your Ives. And your kales, you know, you, you can't, you can't, you've got to put Chopper amongst that as well. You know what I mean? To pip him from non league or wherever he come from was, was an absolute masterstroke. You know, Bob Pearson, he got mentioned in Mark McGee's. He's, he's had a few mentions. You yeah, he didn't, didn't like me. He didn't like me. No, he didn't, he didn't like me, Bob. I think because I was, no, nah, he, he didn't really get on with me. I don't think I was one of his players. He liked Daichi because I think he brought Daichi in. So, he, he was more of a dietary man than me, so he, he, he didn't really. I didn't really have much contact with with him. But uh, he seems quite involved. Denzel said the same. Denzel said he didn't like him either. Oh he really? Like to, yeah, but he yeah. he seems to be a massive part of like the scouting and, and the bringing of the players. But you know, if, if he's only a scout to so not get on with you, not get on with Denzel, what? Yeah. Why, is he no, playing? It wasn't his boys. It wasn't his boys. Right. You know what I mean, yeah. it was just. Where I come through, uh, Billy and Tony's probably come through somewhere else, another angle, and not Bob. You know, it, 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 he's like that. He yeah, loved right, okay, yeah, he yeah. Loved Chopper. Fucking hell, he, he would have, oh, he'd do anything with Chopper. Because that was, <laughs> he, he plucked him out of non league. And that, yeah. that's his man. So, yeah, but, he's, obviously, uh, he's obviously good at his job, wasn't he? What, what he did. So, really good. Really good. Really good. You know, that, that, system, that system that was working underneath us, you know, you know you'd watch him train after. Um, the you know the boys that were coming through, and yeah, yeah. there was there were some good kids there, really good kids, and, and it proved when Sads come through, uh, and Robbo obviously, Alan Dunn come through, you know massive that, that's a massive line of players to, to you know to to take throughout the them them five or six years, you know so some some game some game you know fair play to him, I hope yeah. he was a percentage. No, but that's, I don't understand what you're saying completely. He's um. He's obviously got players he's brought into the club and they've done well. Maybe just because he didn't, he didn't find you himself. He, nah, obviously didn't nah, like it's you. It's not one of them. He would he'd ignore you, but he would just, he just yeah, wouldn't yeah. have the time of day for you, really. But he was, he was all over Chopper, yeah? Yeah, oh, yeah. All over him, mate. Yeah, all over him. Rightly yeah. so, though, yeah. wasn't he, Chopper? What was he like? Yeah, yeah good lad. Enjoy, enjoyed his, his company. Um I think he was only allowed out if I was allowed out, and that was that, that was the way it was. I think if, it, if if I wasn't if I wasn't going out, I think he wasn't allowed to go out. So <laughs> what yeah. was that? No, I just I just think he, he didn't. His uh, his girlfriend didn't trust him in in, 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 a, in, a, in a way. She didn't trust him, but if she knew she I was going, after him. yeah, yeah, yeah. But I was the worst one out of a lot of them. So. <laughs> <laughs> So we get yeah. promoted. What's your, what's your memories of that season? Obviously, brilliant memories. The final day, the five 0 win against Oldham. Yeah, yeah. So my, my boy was mascot at the time, uh, three years old, walking him out full house, and that that was my interview. Really, you know, to see the place absolutely ramo was is um, yeah, really, really pleased, really, really pleasing day, and to, obviously to to pick the trophy up in front of all them crowds, it, it, it was a special day, and. Uh, 
uh, we had a good party up there and I think we flew off to somewhere after that and um, yeah really really enjoyed that that day and that time and uh, yeah as I said I think we we, did, we flew off to, to buy beef or Tenerife after that one or the other or um, Magaluf one of them but uh, no nah, that was a good day proper day you know they, they, I've got photos of that sprung around the house and um, yeah it's a really uh, some really good times really good times well, talking about being away and going away, a question I always ask everyone is, who did you room with at away matches uh, or, or away trips? And this is where well, you, you've come into your own even more than you did. With the <laughs> <laughs> what See, the fuck? I've the boys is I've done it all on purpose, so I've got them on my own. <laughs> I don't even know how to approach the ask you the question of what went on. No, I've, I've, I've been terrible as a kid. I even do it now. You know what I mean? I've, I've just been awful, you know what I mean? Awful sleep, up, you know, nightmares or whatever. But uh, obviously, occasion, uh, Sean, Sean uh, shared with Sean Dyche. So, first time away from home. And I'm, I always like a bit of light in the room. So, um, he's, um, he's ready to go to bed. So, all the lights are going off. Now, you know the hotels, you get double curtains, so they shut like that, and there's like nothing, nothing. So I'm like, I like to know where I am around the room and things like that, just like I need to get a piss in the night or whatever. <laughs> so, um, Sean's gone. So I've got the Sean, Sean, do you mind if I open the, open the curtains? He's gone, what are you going on about? Open the curtains. So I've got, you know, I've got a little bit of thing going on and things like that. So we had the curtains open and... Uh, I don't think I don't think I slept well at all. You know what I mean? Some things are. Oh, I can't have a nightmare. I can't do anything. But something happened during the night, and I think I had a belch out, or I was I was screaming. You know, or I was I was playing a game in in my dreams and things. Like that. So like that, that that was the main one. I was I was used to play football in my sleep. So oh, I was yeah, sleep, I'm going, kick it away, edit, edit, or something like that. So I'm screaming the players in my sleep. You know. It's just, <laughs> Wait, yeah, can you imagine just, you now in these days with VAR? Oh, God, yeah. Bloody hell. So, yeah, it, it was just, you know, the, then the lad sort of, then I got me way. I ended up getting a room on my own and stuff like that. So it was, you know, just, just yeah, it, just the way it is. My mind, overactive mind, and it just, you know, I still do it now. Still do it now. Yes. Yeah. Um, that's like, I just think that's, with that and, and you're throwing up, in my, in my opinion, it's just your competitive edge. That's all it is. Probably yeah. made, you, made you end up being a pro footballer. Do you know what I mean? Because you, you uh, wanted it that much, and the desire. It is, it is, it is. You know, and, and uh, nah, just as I said before, just a fruitcake, mate. You know what I mean? <laughs> and I played for the right club. I made it up for the right club, really. Fuck it, it was a, it was a perfect match. Mark Bertram was told, you know, exactly what you just said. He said, he, I think he ruined me once, and he was going fucking ref offside and yeah, all this. I know. And there's just, well, I think there's Birch. He told the story as well of, of Dave Tuttle. Yeah. You shared a room with him, and he was yeah. in the he was in the corner of the room cowering. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember that one. I remember that one. It's, it's just it's just going away from home and, and somewhere that you're not used to, and and, and it, you know it, it, it <laughs> used to be a sort of a a bad. It used to just be a bad. You know, I, I, I'm I'm thinking more of me me mate next to me than I am getting to sleep. I think, oh, fuck, you know, what we're going to do now? Oh, shit, you know what I mean? But that's the way it was. I'm, just, I'm, I'm, really, I'm not relaxed enough. I'm just hypo and, you know. Yeah, did you ever get to a When we won the league, did you think, fucking hell, that's job done. Like, did you switch off then, like, for the summer, or was you still head on it constantly? Uh, I was I was on it. You know, I, mean, I, I worked, you know, I wasn't great at pre-season, mate. I, was, I wasn't the greatest. You know what I mean? I used to come back half a stone overweight and and struggling the running, you know what I mean? And, uh, you know... Oh, so you'd, like, you'd, switch, you'd switch off from football and enjoy your summer then, like you wouldn't... Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, like, yeah. Oh, God, yeah. Oh, yeah. But but then two weeks, a week before we got back, I was I was, I was was getting my head back into it and things like that. Because, you, you know, that summer as well, we had the news with Chopper um, getting diagnosed with, it, with, with cancer. Yeah. And I was I was away somewhere at that time, and um, uh, Mark Mark had phoned me, and um, I was in shock. I was in total shock because I'm thinking, you know, his, you know, his health was 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 the main concern and things like that. You, you know, and um, and then football just goes out the window then really, and then um, and then you think, 
you know, it's tough. You know, we got to, he got us to his goals, got us to that division, and you know, we need we need him, we need him. And, yeah. uh, that that was tough. That was tough. And I, I think um, coming back the pre season and he, he he wasn't around and uh, that made it a bit more tough. But um, you know, life goes on and, and and you know the rest is history with Neil and. Uh, but that 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 hit hard. That hit hard to see, to see someone as close as one of the boys, and you know, you know, that was that was tough, really tough, yeah, tough. Well, he did come back eventually, he had, and, and had the fairy tale ending. But during yeah. during, his, during the time he was gone, um, Richie sadly really come into yeah. his own, and as you said, another crackpot, Steve Claridge was at the club as well. Yeah, and they formed quite a formidable partnership in the first season back in the championship. Yeah, strange combination, really, because, you know, you look at Sags with his height and, you know, you, you'd think a, a little one with a bit of pace would sort of work well with Sags, but they would, they would, they worked really well together. And it, it was, it was, it was a strange combo, really. And, uh, but they, you know, they hit the ground running. Uh, Steve was, you know, he was a fucking oddball, proper oddball, but you know what I mean? He was all for himself, he, you know, great lad, but he was all for himself. But uh, it was all about him, and uh, but uh, you know, great lad. You know, we, we all, you know, again, you know, he's another one. You know, he'd meet, he'd have a night out with us, or we'd go back to Portsmouth or, or whatever he'd done. But uh, yeah, he, he was a top. I enjoyed it. I, I enjoyed playing with him because when you go a little bit back to front, you know, you, you know, quickly he, he, he could hold the ball up. He could, and Sands was the same. So you knew that their centre halves were going to have, have a tough old time. Not. You know, Sads was quick as well. I, I see Mark's interview and, and, it, and he was talking about Sads as if, and he was probably spot on. If we if had Sads at the end, we, we'd, have, um, we'd have got promoted to the Premiership. And I think he's spot on with that. I think he's totally spot on with that. And, um, you know, they were two quality, quality strikers. And, and that, that day at Palace, I think, epitomised both of them, really. You know, that, that was some day, you know, beating them 3-1. Um, you know, we had a couple of sticky results before that, and it, that was that was a test of character going to Palace. Uh, I think we went a goal down as well, and to win three one was 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 the turning point for for our, our boys. And I think everyone looked at ourselves in, in that dressing room and went, "Fucking hell, we ain't bad. We yeah. ain't fucking bad here." And um, that was that was that was the turning point for me to to think, boys, we can go anywhere. As long as it's not a hotel, <laughs> <laughs> where you can go anywhere and, and, and beat sides. So that's where, um, yeah. you know, I, I think that was a massive turning point for us that game. I know what you're saying. Obviously, you, you've, you've won. Well, yeah, we won the League One into the Championship. Yeah. Quite, a, you know, a winning side, big runs, big wins, yeah. and then to go step up the division. Yeah. You're coming against better opposition. You need that ball to stick if you're sticking up up top, don't you? Yeah, yeah they, they lead you a little bit. Yeah, they was they were spot on. You know, they were they were they were everything you you wanted, and you know with the goals to come as well. And um, I, I just I just found every game it, 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 they were all tough games. That that league was very very tough. You know, that was really a tough season. But you know, you, you just roll up anywhere and you think, fucking here we go, Mills in town, and here we go. You know, you, and, and it, it was like that. It was like that. Yeah, it's got to Stockport. It's got to be. Let's bash them up for one. Let's go somewhere else and go and bash someone else up. And it, that's what it is. And, and and the confidence that come with with the youth that we had in the side and the, and, the, and, the, and the, you know call myself a sensible head with Daichi and and, and uh, obviously Matty and and, and Robbie and, 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 and Big Tone. You know you want you didn't want to get in there, get them too excited about it, but you, you could see mm -hmm. them just flourishing and things as Fucking hell, I wonder what the next league's like. You know what I mean? That's what they're thinking. They're thinking, Christ, I wonder what this next league's like. So that was what it was. And, you know, it, it, it all, you know, the way it ended and, and, and how it ended was, 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 was horrible. I've not, I've not even once gone on YouTube or anything like that and gone and watched that last, that goal that, that conceded us. Talk uh, about uh, Birmingham in the playoffs, yeah, obviously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We went up there in the first leg um, and, and drew one all. Should have won the game, really. Dion Dublin yeah. scored for us. I've seen an interesting picture on, actually. Uh, I was just putting some images together from one of the videos the other day of Dion Dublin. Is you and Dion Dublin having a right... I don't know what you're saying to each other. You're having a right in-depth chat. Did you have... 
Did you welcome like, his experience? Yeah, well, the, the, the story goes with that. We went up to Sheffield United and um, we got beat 2-1. Now, our dressing room was, was always sort of a quiet dressing room. Um, we always let Mark speak and I'd lost the plot. I fucking, I, I, I'd scored the goal there and I just, I just went at Mark. I went, this is bollocks. This is all fucking bollocks. We're sitting, we're sitting fourth in the table, chance of going up to the premiership and we ain't got a striker. We ain't got a striker. So we're going into the games with no striker or, or I don't know if Stevie was injured or whatever. But that, that night, and, and, and Tony piped up as well. Sorry, where was this chat? In the dressing room? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I've, never, I've never lose things like that, but I think the way we lost that game, you know, we, we had kids on the bench. We had like Alan Dunn on the bench, you know, no disrespect to Danny, but he wasn't ready at that time. And, he, and he, I think he'd come on and, 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 and things, you know, I, I just come off the pitch and, you know, I was fucked off. And, and I, I, I thought it, in my head, I, I, I thought the club was stopping us from progressing because they didn't really want to go there. They were scared to go that extra yard. Right. So I'm on the coach on the way. I'm, I'm fucking fuming. You know, I'm, I'm really fucking fuming. Mark, Mark sat sat next to me and um, he said, um, "I think we've got Dion." I said, "You're going to get help." I think he he actually went to the chairman after and said, "We we, we need help. We need help." And um, Dion come in and, um, you know, and, and that, that was that was the signing that we needed, you know what I mean? We needed someone like that to come in and um, yeah. to progress us. But it, it is because where we, we were such a tight-knit group of, of lads uh, and I, f- I felt as being captain, it was my time to sort of stick up for these boys and, and go, right, fuck this, you know, this is it. We need, we need every help that we need if we are going to move on. And um, fair play to Mark. He had that, he had that one in the bag. He had Dion in the bag and, uh, and that come through for the next, next game after that. So yeah, very, you know, I just, I just think at that time I was, you know, I'd I'd had enough and, you know, losing the way we lost as well. Um, Yeah. Just had enough and and let things go. And and, and Tony backed me up. He, 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 uh, he said his piece as well, so it was it was just that night and uh, everything um, after that was was cool. Everything was cool. Yeah, so he sort of when you hit him with it, he sort of had he was already had, he had the wheels in motion. Yeah, he, it, so he, was, he was in the background, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> we, we're Strachan, he, he had that connection with Strachan. He worked yeah. with Dion, and and, and 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 the deal was done. I, I think it, it probably cost Frio you know, a couple of quid, but. It, 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 you know, we needed someone up there. It, you know, it, 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 we were we were Fred Bear at that sort of time, and uh, you could just see us slipping out of, of the playoffs. And um, it, it needed that boost to, to come in. He was great in both boxes, Dion. You know, he, he was a centre half as well. You know what I mean? He could head the ball out for you and head the ball in for you if, if, if that was the yeah. case. And that was the case in Birmingham. You know, one ball in, header, goal, and then um, he was quite influential in the dressing room as well, wasn't he? Yeah, good, very good talker, very good talker, and that that was something you know another player we needed on the pitch for, for uh, talking and organisation. But yeah, it was it was a it was a master stroke really. But uh, you know that 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 game, as I said, I've not I've not watched that once. I, I, just, I don't I don't want to watch it. I'm not interested in it, and because uh, we all know the repercussions of what happened after that. So yeah, where did you as a group? Obviously, you've gone. It's, it's not worse because obviously we've gone up buzzing. We've took that momentum. We've nearly gone up again. Yeah. And then as, as a group for the first time at the end of that, after the Birmingham game, when the dust had settled, yeah. it probably felt like a complete kick in the bollocks, even though it's been yeah. a really good season. Yeah. Did, did you notice like the, um, the levels in the group drop at all? Yeah, we, um, we come back, we come back. Um, well, we had to stay behind for about three or four hours after the game. So, we were queuing up uh, behind, <laughs> funny enough, I was queuing up behind Frank Maloney. Her dentist would tell you as well, you know, I'm, we're all queuing up. We've got a police wall and things, trying to get to our cars. Frank Maloney's in front of me and as a man, as a man. And uh, <laughs> so, yeah, it, it, was, it was strange. I mean, Tom, we went off to um, 
to Gans Hill, we, we need a blowout. We need a right blowout. So we went off to, to faces in, in, in Gans Hill. Uh, Teddy Sheridan was in there, funny enough. He'd come over and said, I like him and stuff like that. And we, we, we had a few drinks in there. And then we were back in in the morning at, at, at the ground, at the, at the training ground. And, you know, we, would, we just looked at each other and gone, you know, you know, this is it. You know what I mean? It's, you know, yeah, it's probably the first time that dressing room had probably felt that low. Yeah, like, yeah, still, yeah. It's still really a high, do you know what I mean? Yeah, it was, mate. And we, we um, you know, we said, what, what do you want to do? You know what I mean? Do you want to go away? Or, you know, then we decide, yeah, come on, we, we'll go away. There wasn't many at that, that, that time. Uh, but I think we need to get away, regroup with each other and get amongst each other because you know you know you were, you were thinking to yourself with the crop of young players we had how many were going to stick around and and um, could this squad disband and, and, and things like that so yeah all, all going through your head and then obviously the ITV digital stuff was going on um, yeah so it was a tough tough sort of time really but um, yeah, but it, 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 that was a tough, that was a tough night, tough night, tough night. Yeah. And then coming forward, obviously, say the ITV digital thing fell through. Did you sense that? No, the following season, it wasn't a bad season by any stretch to go. You know, we nearly did it under Neil Harris. We nearly made the playoffs as, as him as manager, and then the next season we nearly went down. Yeah. But you boys, as players, nearly went up, lost to Birmingham. Next season, I think we still finished eighth or ninth, which is yeah. by no means a bad season. Was that the um, did Mark go that season? He went to start the following season. Start the following. Yeah, yeah. Was that, when, when the Rotherham game? The Rotherham game was that That's, season. Yeah. yeah, that was the that was the next season. I think first home game, wasn't it? Yeah, and we got banged about five, didn't we? Yeah, yeah. yeah Dental game. Well, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a that was a that was. I, I think I think there was a lot of I was doing contractual things for for win bonuses that had been sorted out and. Uh, it needed to be sorted out by three o'clock and I was, you know, still hadn't been done. And um, so my mind was fucking sorting out these win bonuses and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, so it was all, it was like a take it or leave it sort of situation. So it was like, bollocks, well, you've got till three o'clock to get these signed. So we, they all got signed straight up. And um, we had my mind on it, to be quite honest, in that game and everything sort of, could happen, happened really. Yeah. We were awful. Um, they played a way that, that, that was not nice, you know what I mean, very physical. And that first day, we, we didn't need a Rotherham. And um, yeah, so we got we, we got beat against them heavily. And then, you know, as you said, the season was all right after that, you know what yeah. I mean? Darren Wardy, um, you know, he'd he, he done very well, uh, come from a good pedigree. Good height, good pace, different centre half to me and Daichi. Yeah. Uh, we were more commanding in the air, but he was more of your footballing type centre half. Um, could have been better in the air. Yeah, I can't, I'm trying. I'm sorry, just to cut you off. You and he, you and Daichi, that fits to me. Yeah, you and Darren Wall. I couldn't imagine. No, I don't, I don't know him. I don't know no. him, but, but obviously the peck and beck and the way he looked and at his air cuts, yeah. I couldn't imagine two different more players. No, no, but he was, he was totally. I think he was the one. It was it was it was the new breed coming through, yeah. you know, and, and that was the that was the way. And uh, Mark's interview upset me the other day when he was thinking about bringing Phil Jackie Elker in. I thought, fucking hell, me and Dyson were doing all right. You know, what I, mean? <laughs> I thought, well, I'm a position, you know what I mean? We had about six centre arms at the club, and he wants another one. And I thought, well, well, of course, yeah, that would have been well, not necessarily you, but he played in your position, didn't he? Ah, it's bad, bad. That's, that's, now you know all these secrets that come out, you know what I mean? But um, no, Darren was, was was different, you know what I mean? But very quick, very quick, you know, for a centre half, he was very quick. But uh, yeah, but he, he ended up having a decent career there. Yeah, as, as a captain, like you just said there about the win bonuses. He was obviously captain for quite a, quite a long stretch of your time at Millwall. Yeah. Does that come with more responsibility than just being a captain on the pitch? You have to, is there other stuff you have to delve into, like player arguments with managers and contracts? Yeah, and stuff I don't, like I don't, no, it doesn't really come. I was always there, you know, as our older head now, you know, becoming an old head of the dressing room. And uh, I think I think we always sort of advise the players in, 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 in what they want to do. You know, was it the best move for me or... or should I stay or should I go and, and, and stuff like that? You know, they were very upfront with you. You know what I mean? They didn't really keep anything from you. You know what I mean? So if they had 
agent problems or they wanted their contract sorted out and things like that. But it was always there for them. They, they, never, they never were them sort of characters that sort of kept themselves to themselves. They were all always open with you and, and, and that was that. You know, yeah. we could guide them. We could, you know, self-assured, we could guide them, tow we guide them in a way, but um, they they they, they, had their, they had their futures mapped out, and um, you know, and, and they, as I said, they, they they deserved every single move that they all, they all got absolutely. Right. So season after, obviously, yeah. Mark McGee um, loses his job early in the season. Yeah. Do you remember that when he lost his job? He'd lost yeah, it was a tough. It was a tough call. Um, obviously, we lost Ray Harford. Um, and um, Mark decided he wanted another um, assistant manager. Okay. And he brought Archie Knox in, which was Fergie's old right-hand man. Right. So he's come in, very different to what we've been used to. Remember, we've got young boys in the dress room, you know what I mean? The dress room's never been um, an attacking dress room. We've never, you know, that Sheffield United bit I said was, was all a little bit out of context. Um, but now you've got a fella, Scottish fella, coming into the dressing room, very, very hyperactive, great experience. I loved him. I, I, I enjoyed him. I enjoyed everything. But for the first time in their careers, these young boys are seeing a, an assistant manager who's banging his fists at, um, at the skips and things like that. He's thumping him, thumping him, thumping him. This ain't fucking good enough. This is a load of shit. You know, the broad Scottish accent. And we all, I've said, you know, I'm, I'm just, when I'm the singer, I'm, I'm like, well, okay, fair enough. But these young boys are like, whoa, fucking hell, what's this? You was like that. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. yeah. On, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> give me more of that. Give me more. <laughs> but it was, it, 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 it I, don't, I don't know if Mark ever mentioned him on the, on the video, but uh, he, he, he changed the dynamics. Right. And it did, I don't th I think, if Mark looks back on it, it was the worst thing he'd ever done was to bring him into our dress room. Just, just weren't the right fit. Nah, nah, just wasn't the right fit. You know, speaking to him, you know, he, he was great. He was a great bloke, you know, really good bloke. But there was, uh, he just wasn't, you know, you could put him in an experience Man United dress room and they're all, you know, they're all sort of take it and, and, and do that. Mm. But we, we just wasn't, we wasn't used to that. And um, that was a massive, massive turning point in Mark's career. So I think I think he'd have had a job there for life. I think Mark would if he'd have kept going, I think I think, you know, and then the, you look at the performances that led up to Mark's the, the Preston at home was fucking awful, you know what I mean? It was drab and it wasn't the side that we thought, you know, the the, the two seasons before. And you could see you know where the manager's on his on his arse. You know, you know, you you see it. You, you know, you don't want to see it, but you just feel that it, it, it was coming. And yeah. um, I think with Dennis coming in and things like that, that was always going to be the the um, underline for, for, for Mark, that, that, that Dennis was always going to be the next one to take over. And, uh, and that was that, really. Uh, yeah, you know, I, th I think he said in his interview, off, he, he knew, you know, you do know, you know, I look at... Yeah, yeah. I look at um, managers' dismissal. Some managers will just hang it out, hang it out until the, until the end. But I think Mark knew. Um, it's like when Neil left Millwall, you know, I think Neil knew the time was up. He didn't want to drag his heels along the floor. He knew his time was up. And, and being, being Neil, you know, club legend, he walked for the sake of the club. And, yeah. You know, that, that, that's that's what you got to do. You can't keep dragging your heels and and and, and staying there for the sake of another week's money or whatever. It's just there's no point. There yeah. ain't no point. So, yeah, he he it, it was sad to see him go, but I, I do believe that uh, he was Archie Knox was the turning point on that on on, on that. Really, I really do. I really do. Looking back at it now, I completely agree. What you said, like everything Neil Harris did for the club as a player, all the goals he scored as a manager, the memories he give us. In my opinion, better than both those things was walking away when he did because um, yeah. he, he took the club to there and instead of letting it, like you say, dragging it out, he left it exactly the right time. Yeah, he did, man. Um, McGee leaves in uh, obviously when Harris was a player and you was a player. Yeah. And um, yeah, so Dennis Wise gets the job, an experienced player, but his first job as a manager. When did yeah. he start, why is he coming? Because he couldn't have been 
What have you been about 29 at that time? He yeah, couldn't have been yeah, probably 30s then, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. Did you have his appointment as manager? Yeah, it wasn't bad. I, I, I you know, what I mean, I wasn't, you know, it, it was, it was, it was my first time that I've, you know, had to work with a new, new manager. Yeah. Obviously, we knew him as a player. Um, he come in for a few, then them games that he come into, steadied the ship really, and um, you know, still, still fit. You know, still wanted to work, still wanted, had the hunger, which, which, which is good. Um. I don't think we got on. I'll, I'll be honest with you. I don't think we we got on realistically. I wasn't. I don't think I was ever going to be his type of type of player. I don't, I don't think he, 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 we, we we didn't really hit it off at all. Um, and you know, it just it was just one of them things. Ray Wilkins. I've worked with Ray um, with England. Uh, enjoyed them a time there, and I thought he, Ray might have been my sort of ally. And it was just like, it, it dragged me up north, you know, and, and I'll be the, the, the last sub or something like that. You know, I wouldn't even sub and things like that. Yeah. And then Burnley away, I used to do a column in the um, in the local press, South London press, gone away to Burnley. Um, again, yeah. left me out. And um, and that was that. And I, I wrote in a, an article in the paper and sort of did dig him out a little bit and um, that wouldn't be allowed in this day and age would it you, no, most, no, no, do that, no, no. well you never a player doesn't really get have a, have a say in a local paper do they so oh, I yeah. had an article every sort of uh, Tuesday come out Thursday I should do the interview on the Tuesday so I'm fucked off with travelling all out of Burnley and not getting changed and stuff like that Yeah, and uh, you could see the squad dwindling as well you know there was there was you know there was players who were you know, getting a little bit unhappy and things like that. Yeah. But he was getting results, which was fair enough. You know, he was getting results. So, yeah, I, I put my bit in the local paper and uh, I was dragged up to the office and um, and I was I was gradually winged out the, um, out the, out the club, really. Um, maybe, maybe he thought first one to go, I want the captain to go. You know what I mean? The captain's got to go. If he can go, anyone can go. Yeah, anyone can go. So, so that happened, um, and he, obviously he was mates with Tony Adams, and um, he, he was manager at Wickham at the time. So I moved on to Wickham, and, and, and that was the rest is history. So yeah, yeah. Well, I can understand what you're saying. Um, if you're going to drag someone up north and make them the 16th or 18th man, whatever it is, yeah. you, can have, you can have a kid to do that. You don't have somebody who's yeah, yeah, I had a young family at the time as well, and I, yeah. you know, it, it just you know it's just. It's, it's having a little bit of respect for someone, really. You know, you know, if you want to, if you want to wean someone out of the club, just tell them, and and and, and we'll go. You know what I mean? And obviously, what went on after that with the FA Cup run? I think I left. I left about three weeks before the FA Cup final. I was never going to be involved. You know what I mean? But uh, for that sake, I was like, I don't, I don't think I can sit around at home and watch the F, the FA Cup final. So um, one of my mates called me and said, I was afraid to go over to Amsterdam. So I went, yeah, I'll have a bit of that. Go to Amsterdam, have a, have a weekend there, watch the, just watch the game in one of the bars. You know what I mean? Just go, just watch the game in the bar. And fucking hell, this bar went into, who's was sitting in front of me, a fucking Millwall fan. And I'm like, oh, fucking hell, I can't wait to get away from all this. <laughs> yeah, so that 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 was uh, too tough was, to watch for you. Yeah, couldn't really. Yeah, tough, tough. Yeah. But I was pleased for the boys. You know, I mean, I was pleased yeah. for the ones that was that, that, that was still there. Um, you know, he, he he achieved. You know what they achieved. You know to get to the cup final is is something special. Really, you know, you're never gonna forget that day. Um, but yeah, the ones that were that were still there when when I was there. You know, very very pleased. For them, for, for, for getting there, it's a shame because everyone, you know, everyone we speak to for one reason or another, and they're not just saying it because they're on the show and they know me all fans are watching. Shame yeah. they didn't want to leave the club. You didn't want to leave the club. Uh, and, but it yeah. wasn't time to move on, mate. Six years, two hundred and eleven yeah. games, ten goals. 10 yeah, goals, uh, mate, that's what, yeah, that's it's not bad. One in ten, it's not bad, is it? <laughs> and he, and he, well, we've discussed a couple of your goals there. One at Cambridge, you got an header. Yeah. Uh, Brentford the day, Ryan O'Mac got yeah, sacked, yeah. you scored. Yeah. What, any other goals that stick out from Nintendo? Uh, Forest away weren't a bad one because usually they were, header, they were headers that, um, that I scored most of the goals with. Forest away was with my feet. 
But uh, yeah, you, you know, you just you can get get on the scores. So you, you know, th- 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 I think that's what makes successful teams. I think if everyone's sort of chipping in with, with goal midfield defence, strikers are all chipping in with goals. You, you know, you, you're going to be up. You are going to get successful. Yeah, so um, yeah, it was, it was it was nice to, to score goals and um, yeah, it's a bad added bonus really, isn't it? But my my, like, we was all about the clean sheets, us boys. You know what I mean? That's that's what we was all about. And mm-hmm. you know, with, with with the story with Matty and Robbie getting tucked in and staying, and you know, we, you know, we didn't we, we knew we had so much going forward. You know, if, if us five would do our jobs properly, we, we, nine times out of ten would win the game, and yeah, that's, cool. that's what that's. Uh, you know, you say that now, you know what I mean? It's defenders defend, attackers score. You know what I mean? And that's, uh, that's what it's all about. So, Simple as that job done. Yeah. If you could pick one memory from your time at Millwall, best standout memory for you, what would it be? I'm talking through a few, to be quite honest. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, obviously, the, the Oldham game was, was, was something special. That was an absolute, you know, to, to see that ground uh, packed out. We played Stoke once as well. We, we ended up with nine men. Nine men we had and we won 2-1. And that was another memorable game. You know what I mean? We were fucking getting battered by Stoke. And it was just an onslaught. We had two sent off really early as well. So we're hanging on to nine men. And now we beat the Stoke side. It was a fucking quality side. Yeah. And I just remember just... I think we were actually crawling off the pitch. We were that tired, but the ovation the crowd gave us, it was just unbelievable. Really, it was just mind-blowing. So, you know, they knew what we had put a fucking shift in there. And, you know, they, they ain't stupid over there. They ain't thick. They know when a team has actually put an absolute shift in there. And that that that, that comes to the, another night we had, we beat, um, I think we beat Wolves or West Brom, in the first year back in, in that in that um, championship, one nil Wolves. All under the lights. Tuesday nights these were Wolves. I, I think I think Clary's got us a penalty. I think Wolves. Yeah, it was on a Friday night. I'm sure. I think we went to yeah. the venue afterwards. Yeah, yeah. Because Clary's got us a penalty. Yeah, and that was another because because you the, the crowds were gradually moving up. You're getting fifteen thousand. How many is it tonight? Fucking fifteen thousand. Blimey. You know what I mean? There weren't weren't much empty. The only bit that was empty is underneath the. The, the, the away stands, you know, they were they were packing it out, and, it, and that's what that league was all about. You had big clubs in that league. You got the big grounds. Um, Coventry away was a, was a special night. You know what I mean? We were, you know, we had a big win there. Claridge again got got us the goal. We're hanging on, hanging on, and uh, you know the spirit and and everything is. You know, I've I've, I've said in other interviews that. If you can get yourself a dress room like we had for that for that space of time, the way we socialised and the way we were on the pitch, on and off the pitch, you know, you know, you can't go wrong with that. You ain't gonna you ain't gonna lose many games, and with everyone pulling in the right direction, you you you, you make it into a family environment, and I think that's what we made it into. They were. Having, I was seeing more of them than I was my family. You, you know, that, that's what it was. You, you yeah, know, yeah. You, you, you're seeing someone as your family. And then that's what it was. It, it was a tight family. And I'm, I'm trying to recreate all that now, you know, going into management and stuff now. Just I, was about to say, I was just about to say, what, what you're up to now, because you, you still seem very passionate and I think you'd be a good manager. I think people would be shit scared of you as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm... Um, I've been down the non league route. Um, I was with uh, uh, Ollie Murs, um, Club Yeah, I've, I've been I've been with them for four years. I left them and I've become uh, assistant manager at Haybridge Swifts, which oh, nice. is the same league. Um, I was I'm with Carl Dugweed, um, ex to play. He's the manager, but he's decided to step down. So I've, I've just been given the job there as manager. So, what league? Uh, what league's that? Uh, Ryman North. Ryman. Oh, Ryman. Yeah. Ryman. So yeah, it's it's it's, it's a it's something that I've wanted to do. I've always been the assistant, so I've enjoyed being the assistant. But now I've got my time now of becoming a, um, a manager, and you know, I, I do say to the boys on on the WhatsApp group, if, if you if you can get a spirit into a club that you're at and things like that, that what we had, you are you are going to go far with that. You know, spirit takes you. 
a long way in, in, into into games. You know, when you're busting a gut that last minute, your mate's going to bow you out. Oh, Dice used to bow me out, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I've made a Rick, he's, he's round the corner fucking bowing me out. So, it's, 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 it was something special. It was something special. And I, I, I do speak to other lads you know, on the on the, on the the chat and they do say, I've, I've never been in the dressing room since, since that. It, it was like that. special, special place, special place. Have you got all your badges in that, yeah? Yeah, all that all up the date, mate. I'm not I'm not I'm not one of these. I don't really if it comes to me, it comes to me. I'm not a I'm not a football mercenary. I'm not gonna, you know, keep I, I'm not I don't I'm go and watch games. I've as I'm busy with with, with me doing the job that I do. So yeah. it's um yeah, so it's I, I haven't been to Millwall for for a year or so, so that, 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 you know, drastically want to get over there and feels and watch, like I haven't uh, either. What's that? So it feels like I haven't either at the minute. Fucking yeah. hell, no football. It's, it's no, hard work, no. isn't it? No, it's awful, mate. It's awful. But fingers crossed, you know, I'm, I'm, I've told my boys we're back in pre-season in the first week of July. That's all, that's all you can That's all you can say. I can't do, you know, that's the that's the first print that I've, I've set out. But if, if it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. Well, mate, there you go. Listen, thanks for joining us. I'm sure you're yeah, going to succeed in management. Like you said, you take, you take your player ethic and your work ethic into that. I'm sure... It'll be successful. Yeah, you have a go, mate. You have a go. Just don't go down the Archie Knox route. <laughs> <laughs> you'll have to get you'll have to get eleven cubicles in the dresser yeah, no, no, like no, before no, the game. I know, I know. No. They're all bit soft these days, I've got to say. I oh, know they are, mate. Don't make them like they used to. Stuart no. Nevercott, Mill Legend, top man, mate. Really appreciate your time. Thank you, mate. Cheers.